The United States is making new allegations now that Iranian intelligence agents are actually helping to fund and perhaps even train Sunni extremists fighting in Iraq. Joining us now for some perspective on all this is Ali Reza Jafarzadeh, the author of The Iran Threat, President Ahmadinejad and the Coming Nuclear Crisis, also the founder and president of Strategic Policy Consulting. Thank you for joining us on this big night. Thank you. Great to be here, Steve. In Iraq, American military officials say they have learned these uh, facts from um, the debriefings of captured men. It sounds like this does not come as a surprise to you. Uh, absolutely not, uh, Steve. I think this very much corroborates with the information I have been getting myself from my own sources inside the Iranian regime, and these are the sources that have been proven accurate in the past, that suggest that Iran has been extensively involved in funding and, and arming and training the Shia militia groups in Iraq, but now the new information suggests that Iran is also involved in supporting the Sunni extremist elements uh, within Iraq. and, and that corroborates with the information that I was getting that pretty much Iran is supporting any group, any individual that is willing to help, which is escalating violence. We can understand because of the religious linkage, the support of Shia groups, uh, but why would Iran want to back a Sunni insurgent group? That's a great question, uh, Steve. Uh, what Iran is, is, is looking for in Iraq is to basically escalate the level of violence to the point that it would actually force the Americans and the coalition forces out of Iraq. Now, any group that is willing to provide that kind of service for Tehran, which is, you know, planting bombs, uh, uh, attacking Americans, and, and escalating violence there actually serves the purpose of Iran. They don't care whether they are Sunnis or Shias or seculars or non-believers, so long as they serve that purpose it, it, it helps the Iranian regime's influence there. I can see it to that stage, but then haven't they uh, let loose a tiger, a very strong Sunni group on their border, and a chaotic Iraq? Well, they're not very worried about that because uh, Iran believes that, uh, uh, first of all, the Sunnis are the minority. Second, the kind of leverage that Iran has over Iraq uh, far supersedes uh, any kind of uh, counter influence that the, uh, the Sunnis uh, might have. Mm. Uh, remember that uh, Iran is, you know, the, the, the big brother next door. It's a, it's a much bigger country. It's uh, three times as populated, four times as big. Uh, as, as, as Iraq is. They have a lot of uh, uh, groups uh, that are either created or sponsored and supported by the Iranian regime. So they're not really worried about any kind of backlash to their own country at all. Well, you've helped us a lot with the motivations here. Give us more of a sense of what you know about the operations. I mean, how would Iranian intelligence officers approach a Sunni group? Well, um, Iran has uh, really created a very, very sophisticated network uh, inside uh, Iraq, and they have had all the time in the world. They had, they were working on it for about 15, 20 years before the fall of Baghdad. But since the fall of Baghdad in April of 2003, Iran has had a major presence in various uh, Iraqi uh, cities, and and also by providing uh, support for a number of groups there. They have created uh, training centers in Iran that are basically sending message and signal to any groups in Iraq that if you want training, uh, if you want uh, uh, financial assistance, if you want to know how to work with explosives, if you want those actual weapons, we are willing to provide it to them. I have information to suggest that even Sunnis were sent to Iran and were trained in some terrorist training camps uh, in, in Tehran and sent back to Iraq. Uh, so are they just moving uh, across the border down in the in the Basra region there or uh, how are they but, managing that? Yes, well Basra region is, is one region that Iran has been extensively using but mostly for the Shias. But remember the central part of the Iran-Iraq border uh, uh, line, uh, the, the Diyala province is, mm. is very mixed. There are a lot of Sunnis there and, and also uh, north of that. So they're using basically four major provinces that have a common border with Iran all along the border line. There are 17 different border crossings that Iran has been using since 2003 for sending uh, arms and explosives or bringing these elements into Iran for training them. At the border area, they have their own elements to make sure that they are not detected, that they make sure that everything goes right, and then they send them back. They also use uh, a number of benign-looking uh, organizations. These are front organizations that Iran is, is using. Organizations are supposed to to help, you know, rebuild the Shiite uh, 
uh, uh, sites or, or, or helping the Muslims in general. And then under the cover of these organizations really is the operation of the most lethal force within the Revolutionary Guards known as the Quds Force that uses these, uh, these cover organizations to bring in their, their, their uh, bombs and explosives and financial aid. Wow, well thank you. This is fascinating detail early on in uh, the allegations made by uh, American forces in Iraq. Uh, Ali Reza Jafarzadeh, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you very now. much. And coming up we turn to something that started off